Yes, it works very well. We've been actually testing in Wisconsin. Okay, so the, the four things you should know. First of all, it's already there. Second, it works even in full overload. And one of the major problems when you're trying to send the same message to a large number of people is the system can't actually happen. Even with the wind in the Even with that, because you have, you have congestion in the SS7 system between the HLR and the VLR, and there's congestion in the paging system between the PSC and the base stations. All the same, you get congestion because the HLRs and the VLRs and those other parts have some difficulty keeping up with the load, particularly on the paging standards where the back of the is. But with this, we don't have to page anybody. We don't have to look at Tim's thing. Well, no, this doesn't have any congestion. This doesn't have any congestion because all we're doing is we're streaming the text from the base station, just like RTTY. Right. It's, 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 it's an SMS, SMS packet group size. Could you just yes. bytes, No, I'll talk more about the size longer. later. No, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's got variable sizes. Okay, the next thing you need to know is it's geospecific. Because we have, what we can do is we can select which base stations are going to transmit what message. So the mayor of New York, for example, could tell people in New York now run like hell and go north. But he could also tell people in Brooklyn, do not come here. Stay where you are, get off the roads, keep off the roads, don't use the phones, go nothing. And there's one thing that's still in Brooklyn. Yes. You, can tell, you can tell people specifically where to go. And we need to do this because, you know, we do not want people running, we want people, people to run away, but we want other people who do not need to run away to stay where they are. We also need to tell people we're going to come along and we're going to bring you some water tomorrow. So don't panic. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Just stay there. Exactly. You can tell people. Based you're bonded to. The one you're bonded to. So if you and I come from London, we don't, and we log off. We don't need to log on to a website to say that we're in London because it's, it's this no. cell that we're at. So, so we get a message. So like when you when you click the thing on your iPhone, it says you're near here, and it goes all circle, and there's a cell tower somewhere in the middle of no, it. No, 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 nothing like that. Well, that's, that tells you which cell tower you're, you're, yes, you're exactly. near, right? Yes, it, exactly. It's which cell tower you're at is the one where the message is coming from. Yeah. In some cases, it could be a micro cell only about a hundred yards across. In some cases, it could be usually one or two miles okay, across. Well, in case it could be longer. Well, 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 Sorry? I think yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, well, every cell does support this, yeah. But, uh, what about empty cells that are operated by, oh, cells operated by? Well, no, but I don't think we can support one of the guys from uh, Samsung, and they're basically the same protocols. Yes, as long as the protocol is the same, it supports like all GSM systems, except, um, except um, overlaid cells. Overlaid cells don't have their own broadcast carrier. Yeah, right. Because they're handed up from the underlayed cell. Is that an like MBNO type thing? Is that what you mean by an overlaid cell? No, in the hierarchical cell structure, you have your umbrella cells, then you have your macro cells, then you have your micro cells, and yeah. each cell has got its own broadcast like ca carrier, right? The exception to this rule is when you have an underlaid and an overlaid cell, where you've got, you've got a large coverage area uh, that's got a broadcast carrier, but traffic that's close will be handed over to a different frequency group that doesn't have its own control broadcast carrier and then has to be handed back down to the control cluster group again if you want to hand over it first. But it's a special case. But in any case, when you're in the idle mode, you're connected to the one that's got the broadcast carrier on it, which is the underlayed cell. Okay, so the answer is, as long as you're in idle mode, you should be able to listen to the broadcast carrier, you'll get this message, and the thing will ring. Now, the other thing that's important to know is, if you get a text message and it says, run like hell, stand the bear, you don't know if that's true or false. Yes. It's easy to spoof. Cell broadcast is very, very different. Tell me, tell me that's not true. It's absolutely not the case. Okay. Because if we just imagine your, your group of cells there, and here's a cellular company group of cells. As we know, cells are backholes to the base station controller, right? The base station controllers backholes to the MSC, and MSCs are backholed by uh, MSC. MSC, so that's got a VLR on it, and it's got a, and so on. This eventually goes to the HLR, and you know, this is where it comes in, and you do all that signal in the side. Well, here's something interesting. The way that cell broadcast was designed, it's injected in here. Cell broadcast is injected into the BSC that controls the base station concern. Ah, more than that, it's injected into the um, central processor of this one, but this device here doesn't do any traffic control. So when the system's gone into full congestion, when you have a disaster, one of the first things that happens in the first couple of minutes, everything goes boom, boom, and useless. But this is working fine because it doesn't do any traffic control. Since the handover is handled by usually transceiver handlers, which are separate, they're not congested. Right. So this means that if your MSC and all the signal system and all that is fully congested, it doesn't matter. This ought to carry on working. So there's a seven chance. 
To the CV. There's a separately, separately quality of service assigned. So I think that's a separate No, so it's not. 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 Yeah, yeah. ask questions at the end so that you actually right, get okay. so so you somebody so in the head. Because this is what's to the five minute version. <laughs> okay, so this is the idea. With cell broadcasting, you have got a fighting chance, despite its many problems, of actually getting through to these base stations, transmitting some streaming text from those base stations, and every mobile that's camped in the, in the particular cell concern should receive that, even if everything's fully congested. And it should give you a message on the screen, the bell rings, the screen lights up, it flashes, it puts it all on, it's super duper, right? Now, the question is, how do we get it there? Well, the answer is, by using the usual kind of VPN kind of technologies, you have to back all this to some kind of management system. And that management system, on the other hand, is also secured to the uh, police or to the city authorities or wherever it is. But in between those two, there has to be... Uh, what we call a broker, cell broadcast broker. This is the part that uh, cell broadcast provides. Right? Now, now the, uh, when I first started on this project, I didn't have anything in mind to sit there and design everything. But what happened was, uh, first of all, I went along to the networks who own these towers and so on, and I said, oh, you could be doing all this and saving all these lives. And they said, that's a great idea, wonderful. Have the stuff on the back pouch for later. Uh, but don't tell anybody about it. We'll just take care of it for you. Called Brett. Um, then I went off to the uh, Iraq war as a humanitarian coordinator there in, uh, in Syria. And when I came back from that, I went to them again and I said, Well, what did you do there? How have you done so far? And they said, Well, yes, we have priority for those actually. You know, we'll get around to it sometime, but still don't tell anybody about it. Leave it to us, you know. So I said, Fine. Then it occurred to me that they actually weren't having any intention of getting this done for various reasons that they have. I mean, the networks do have perfectly good reasons. Sorry. The networks do have perfectly good concerns about these and they need to be addressed, but they weren't addressing the problem. Yes. <laughs> Something I've learned, I've been looking at. So then what, what, then what they said to us, well, you know, frankly... So they're concerned with proprietary... No, they're concerned with they can't make money off. No, it's not all guys, it's not Billy. It's not Billy. They said, we can't make money off this. Tell us how to make money off this, and then we'll do it. So then we formed a company called the Cellcast Corporation. The Cellcast Corporation then took out various IP rights on various algorithms and so on in order to commercialize it. And that's what they've done now. They produce this bit of work. So you want to be the thing that this is the kind of thing that the UN would just pay for it. Ah, no, the UN may not do that politically because the, the, the right to save somebody's life is the right of the sovereign state concern. So the UN cannot do anything. Like it's not going to say it's a negative version of killing people. It's not killing people. No, it's not. It's but now what I am is I'm the chief technical officer of this company here because it was the only way of getting anything actually done. Even though I'm also on several hats on, I'm the, uh, the uh, Secretary General of the Senate Emergency Alert Service Association, which is a profit organization that coordinates this. I'm also the UN Special Coordinator for Cell Broadcast Harmonization and all this thing and for the European Union as well. But in those capacities, I can't actually do anything. The only capacity we could get anything actually done is a uh, cell cast company who have designed and built all this stuff to prove it works because they kept telling us, oh yes, well it looks good on paper but it can't be made to work. We did it and we proved it worked the first time because finally we got a phone call from a small network in Wisconsin and they said, look, I don't know why everybody's saying this can't be done. It's easy, come and see. So I drove up there and we went there. It took us half a day, half a day's work, me and the techie down at the center to write in the command machine managed command. Everything works the first oh! time. Worked perfectly. No, this is like a right. But meanwhile, it's HML. Then it's not MML. Ah, I beg your pardon. That was an Ericsson switch. Ericsson uses non machine language. MML. Yeah. Okay. The Ericsson MML. If we get an MML command, it will work. Anyway, so then what happened was we decided. Well, look, the networks keep on saying they're going to pursue this and not. We don't have a choice now. We'll have to go to the governments and tell them what it is that they've got here, because this is exactly what they're about. Then we saw Katrina come and go, and then we saw the 
um, the tsunami come and go. And every time the big fat reports would come out saying, oh gosh, we don't have a way of reaching, you know, hundreds of millions of people in a few seconds, I wish we did. I have started to think, well, yes, we do. We have had for some time, you all know about it. So then what happens, the uh, president signed the WARN Act. The WARN Act said to the networks, you have to have some system for transmitting EAS messages. Please tell us what you've got. They had a big, long, year-long study about it. Some expert group met, and they produced a 200 page document that doesn't tell you anything whatsoever. They didn't mention any of this. So I, where were you? You were in uh, Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was not invited to join the committee because I'm not American. No, we were, well, you know, oh, well, wait a second. The FCC has, whenever they do an NPRM, which is what this is, yes. they allow you to post. Yes, and that's why they, after, after the SINSAC committee had met, the, 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 the SINSAC committee, which was the committee that was appointed to study, produced their report, and they didn't mention any of this stuff in. After that, um, Cellcast and I, and many others who know about this, started posting. But what's interesting is, the various industry people, apart from at and haven't even mentioned that they have this. And we've now found out the reason why, because the CTIA went before Congress and said, we don't have any such technology, but if you give us a bunch of money, well, um, no, but this is the same people who said we've got six trillion dollars to do call forward on cellular. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, they, they, they want to find out of cell phones. Yeah, they, they want to do us. Now we, we know it works because South Korea is a country that has CDMA. South Korea does its EAS over cellular by using cell broadcast, and they have been since 2003. And I went to see them, and I sat across the table well, from the director of their version team and said, "Well, tell me what problems have you had?" They keep telling me it can't be done, and he said, "Problems? What do you mean?" No, please, those yeah, of come from are very familiar, <laughs> only familiar with the culture of this. Are you going to be here tomorrow? Yeah. Because I'm going to give my, my talk on this network years, and it's just such a cultural divide. Yeah. Are you giving a talk at this conference? No, this is the only talk I've Why not? Well, I'd like to, yes. Well, can we just get you one of the five minute slots yes. or something? Yes, yes, yes. Well, what time do you need to be? I don't need to leave until 10 o'clock tomorrow. Oh, okay, great. Okay, perfect. Well, maybe I'll make it. Yeah, we'll be yeah, five minutes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that means you're up. Okay, well, I'll make sure I'm up. Do you still have your question, or is that your question? How to implement this? Well, yeah, I'm still looking. Sorry, I'm not going to put this. Oh, okay, when you're done with your talk, I want to ask a question. All right, yeah, sure. So, so this is what's going to happen now. now. I still believe that the key to this is not only that we've got to have it for, for uh, warning any form in the public. I'm not going to get that unless there's something in it for the network. I've got to find out how you commercialise this. Well, so the answer is quite simple. I believe. Well, anyway. No, I believe that. Yes, you can do it that way. I believe it's not difficult. We can find applications that need one of one of two things, as I see. Either the same thing needs to appear on a gazillion terminals all at once at any time. This is perfect for it, provided the volume is low. Or if it has to be geo-specific, at least down as far as the cells are concerned, this is good. And it's very, 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 very cheap. And all of the technology is already in the chips that we need to do. Apart from the software to write. However, we need to get it in. Because of the fact that access to this thing is going to be through this system here, we need to make sure that at the start when we design it, it's possible for commercial users for this and programmers for other businesses can still uh, get in. Fortunately, the person who's been put in charge of designing the, uh, you know, uh, the channelization scheme is me. So I'm in a position at this point, because nobody else wants the job, to fix it so that everybody can get access to this thing. And that's what I intend to do. I intend to make sure that anybody who wants to gain access to this uh, with the permission of the networks, of course, before their application can do so, and at the same time, this broker here can calculate how much bandwidth has been used and who owes everybody what. Then that way, the networks haven't really got an excuse for not doing this. I'm trying to remove reasons for, to not do this because I want to get some life saved. But so, the reason to do that right, is to make this commercially well, attractive. Yeah, that's why I need to do Yeah. Because this is so mind boggling and simple and cheap. Yeah. And it does not really cause the network operators either. No. Uh, so it's almost as if, like California. You're going to get a fast marketing guy. No, 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 you don't. Well, no, no, no. the end users are going to get a random message that says, you know, go buy stuff at Macy's or whatever, no, no, and no. they'll get that. No, you know, no, that's not no, what no, 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 Why would that happen? There's another approach, well, it will which is you can't get the rest of the It sounds small enough that California might. Yeah. There is this health, there was something I read. So, is the California is looking at that use SMS signaling? They're very worried about the emergency services. I just
So California SMS signaling people Whenever a cell broadcast message is transmitted, it begins with a 16-bit code. And the 16-bit code is called the message source identifier. It's like a port number. It tells you what sort of message this is. In my plan, I've got a range of 200 of those which are reserved for core civic purposes. And all the rest can be used for commercial. And that means that nobody receives any spam on this thing. Spam is impossible with it, the way that I designed it. Okay, so now you can ask me questions. Well, let's look at your guys. Let's see your ways of patience. Yes. Well, I, let's, do, let's do the technical questions first. And, sure. then, and then my question is not about the, the architecture. So, but I think well, let's really focus like on architecture. And then I want to move on to humanitarian questions about what he's been doing. Sure. Well, I, I think it's quite a good thing to it. Because the reason I mentioned the California thing is I think you know, it's almost trapped to try to find you know, reasons for the carriers to do it when you know, the effort to do it is really so small. Yeah. And the question is, you need, and this is why California is interesting though on the East Coast because they actually budget video you know, this kind of stuff. And there, there was this explicit, I mean, and it happens too, but an effort to investigate how to use SMS for signaling. And if the question I have is the numbers that you're talking about Rate relative to what they were talking about. But, I mean, you look, you know the way it's selling you can price. Every message costs ten dollars, right? Yeah. So the amount of money that California's already been spending sounds like it would be way above oh, what yeah. you need. This is and I think the issue here is if you have to incent the carriers to do this, you should just bring them to court for, for you know, for, you know, to crave negligence. Yeah. I'm sorry, you were asking about the biggest person. She wanted to get the technical. So obviously, like the 9-11 initiative, you should start your own in GMO. There's no separate from this with in conjunction with the UK government and the FCC. Well, the, the, the different governments can't... That, that will take time, but I mean, that, that, yeah. that is your first that is, that is official the process that you have. The FCC, I've got the MPNR saying you have to carry EAS messages now, you tell us how you're going to right. do it. And they come back saying, oh, you have to give us some of the data from the line of Right. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking for now is how do we launch this thing prior by making presentations to the carriers on how much money they're going to make. For sure. That's more money. No, when you have that, how much bad press they're going to get. And that as well. No, you know, that's, that's not your that's 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 motivation. Well, that's, 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 that's never motivated them before. Yeah. Yeah. So they're worried here about flooding and fires and earthquakes, and you have, I think you have to get those people who are worried, you know, they're, they're setting up emergency centers because actually California is way unprepared if there's an earthquake. Talk to Seth Beery for joint venture for a start, right? I mean, that would be a start, joint venture Silicon Valley and the ABAC people, and go in there, because San Mateo County already has an alert system, and you have to say it, the cell phone, but I doubt it could take the volume that this would. Right, but the question is, if there's mud, in other words, there, there may be budgets already for it. No, that's what I'm saying. I suspect, yeah, there, may, I suspect there are budgets. Already. And you have to build on those budgets. And if, if California is another bad thing, if California says do it, you do it next. Exactly. exactly. So that, that's why this might be the best approach. Because once it's, it's in the standard, you know, it's like the fanatic woman. No, I think it's going to be as well. So you can give a point. Yeah, I, th I think I, I think so, I can because I was at a town just, meeting just last week on emergency. How about the emergency sits? So imagine that I'm sitting down with uh, someone who's in policy and they say, "Well, I've heard that CPA says it can be done, or they're going to cost hundred million dollars." What's the one-liner answer to say? Actually, it's there. The FCC. No, I think it's both. No, the FCC doesn't allow the appropriate words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So what is the what's the one liner that says Appleton did it in one day by and it cost them nothing by 
But not they, 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 just, they just commanded it on. It, the, the reason why it's not on is because it's commanded off. Well, All they did in Appleton was command it on and it yeah. worked. So oh, specifically, yeah. I know HMI and I know where the BSC is around here. I've got some bolt cutters. <laughs> So the right. right. so it's, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, you're saying that it is honestly just a matter of sitting yeah, down at the terminal. And yeah, then you have a demo so, site. So the then you have a when demo site for the rest of the building. Specifically, what is being turned on? Just remember, okay. so specifically what happens is, they say you can control the demands for the of CCH channels to be turned over for the purpose of broadcasting exclusively. And that's what happened. But except in CDMA, in CDMA, there's no. Sorry. Right. So it because what you're, what you're saying, I'm trying to still understand. What you're yeah. saying, that the single command is actually to turn it on and use it, just or just turn it. Yeah. Excuse me. There's lots of feature. If you use a feature, but when when, right. when Ericsson sends you a switch, they do a deal with you about which features you will have and which you won't. To command it on, you have to type in what the product code is for that, yeah. and that unlocks so it. So what we should do is publish a product code. <laughs> 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 so seriously, depending on depending on what switch it is, that is the base station controller. It's just a matter of quote, just a matter of unlocking the feature that's already yeah. in. It's so unlock it. it's so why are they representing that it's hundred million dollars? Because it's CJA. Because it's CJA. No, no, no. What, 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 no, 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 but what is it that they're saying? Is it the security features that they're saying need to be researched? But it's been researched to death for 10 years. Everything's been okay. researched. Okay. They want, okay. What they're saying is they're saying that they want to have um, uh, a committee form and lots of money given to it, and, and by 2012, they'll report back on, on a system that will do all this. But, but why are they saying they're still being researched? Yeah, let's spend more money. So I am lost on what it is that they're saying needs to be done. Well, that, if that the one-liner answer is so crystal clear, which yes. I think it is, yes. then you know what is it politically that they want money? Yes. They want no. money to pay off for the E9 more market. I understand. Market. That's why they're doing it. <laughs> That's why. Oh, oh, yeah. That's yeah. why they're doing it. But what is it? That is at least my reckoning of it. I, I think. I think that what they have want is paying off for all of these things in some way. But this money is going to come from emergency management. I don't want emergency management money spent on, uh, you know, broadcast system. Well, a common carrier is supposed to provide the service in the yeah. first place. Yeah. That's the standard. It's a segue into business yeah. model. Okay. So what I want to go back is to the left-hand right. 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 side of the diagram, which represents ways to monetize this yeah. program. So let's talk about that. Can you talk about, um, one, the infrastructure, two, what you in as the business model to monetize the program. Sure. Now, do you mean to monetize it from the network's point of view or from the application point of view? Every way possible. Okay. First of all, from the network's point of view, one of the problems with self-broadcasting as it is is it doesn't have any billing because there's no call data record right. in this. Right. So nothing for the billing gateway to work on, they can't take you. But an SMS message, they know how much that's worth. Right. Well, an SMS message is, is unicast, so they know who it was sent to. Yeah, how many, how many billing messages? How do they do it? There should be one. Only one? Only two. Anyway, if I carry on here. Now, with, with self broadcast, <coughs> my proposal is this device here can calculate about, uh, because it's, uh, you've got to specify the polygon, you have to specify here's an area where I want this thing to go. And here's some text to say. All we do is we take the polygon, we calculate what's the population underneath that polygon. Multiply one by the other and come up with a figure that says this is approximately how much value there was. No, 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 no. This is the argument problem. This is the argument problem. It's good. It's, you, you don't use it for sewers, you don't use it for problems. Well, the, uh, there's, there's several Can you make a problem. diagram? Yeah. When a message is transmitted, you send in the message a whole bunch of black bombs like this. And they form together what's known as the polygon. So you can create an irregular shape if you like. That's the polygon that states this is the area in which I want this broadcast. Now, what we do is we, we figure out from an algorithm approximately what the population was inside there. So now we know how many people this was targeted at. We'll okay. never know how many people see it. You can do it like that if you like, but the algorithm calculates what is the value of this population. What we do is multiply one by the other. And this machine does it. So all the network has got to do is walk the checks to the bank. Because every month, 
machine goes, OK, singular URL this much, T-mobile URL that much, and AT&T URL that much. The reason I object so much, and this I'm getting my talk, the phone system is structurally inherited in the world. It is modeled like building roads by the hospital ground. And I think that you should really go up to the very straightforward system and will carry mercy. And not try to try to bargain. Well, will you save my life by paying this much? Yeah. Because there's no cost here. You're feeding a fiction. You're feeding the CTIA's fiction. We've got counties here who worry about floods and things. But a much stronger thing than accept. You don't want to give any credibility to the carrier argument that this is a multi-billion dollar cost and that money stopped. Well, this could be so, much more. So what you're saying is, is that the system allows you to create a determined geographic area which you can say we have these demographics and so you can leverage that to do some messaging that has some kind of advertising or public service or whatever it's doing and you get some income off of that. Yes. Why do you care about the number? I mean, you only care about the number of towers, right? You don't care about the population. Yeah. All you care about is how many towers you have to send it out. Yeah. So if you have the local county pay for it, or, or the local jurisdictions oh, pay... Oh, it's hard to get local counties to pay for things right now. What no, but they, they are the people that send out the emergency messages. Yeah, but the, we're laying off teachers right now. No, but they're paying for the messages. They already have a budget to do emergency no. management. No. Teachers are the budget. And it's not going to cost about, much. Well, how about insurance companies? Like so are, you, are you asking us what is That's actually the first argument? The political argument that will have to happen so in this case is the U.S. That's the one. So the the US, in the U.S., there is economic value to the insurance company right. for a life save. This is right. A, I mean, right. And, 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 I, 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 so I understand the monetization. They can move that valuable upstairs. The key thing is, you know how cheap there is. People get to break on their insurance if they pay for that. The cost benefit here is so high that I think the insurance is a good thing. But, you know, you're throwing some liability to them if they don't use it. Oh, so even better, get some insurance. Go to insurance and also, again, I don't know if you can do this, but they're probably protected from reality. But remember, they can do the machine. Jerry Brown. Jerry Brown. Yes, the Ralph Nader is the right guy. But they, they, he's they not in California, though. Yeah, yeah, but Jerry Brown's the attorney. So so I understand the value yeah. of monetizing it in the perspective. Yeah. I also share the. the um, it's either cynical or an honest perspective that it's it's tainting. What you're trying no, to do. No, but I'm not saying you think it's not So it's, it, it does taint by putting a, um, a corporation around trying to um, earn money around this. Yeah. I do understand that it does add a taint to it. Yes. I, 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 don't, I don't disagree that there is value. I, I couldn't do it the other way. Yeah. We had to form a company in British I, I, commercially. I, I, it couldn't be right. the other way. Yeah. Now, but, this is where we are now, wearing two hats. They don't fit up to sure. each other sometimes, but it has to be done this way. But, but it really. The, the one thing that I've heard that really does sound like an interesting, very commercial perspective is to go after the, the, the pre-monetized value, which is life insurance, property insurance, in the areas that are covered by this, and make the argument to the insurance companies that this is something that they should underwrite uh, in order to, there's got to be a cost. Self, and it, it may be that the self it's been years of rationalization on that. It may be, right, right. Yeah, but it may be. I've been around the block several times for that. Oh, sorry, with the insurance companies? Company. Yeah, that's why I really want to get down to um, how do we use this <coughs> for everyday right. monetarization? Because exactly. it's like, it's a, ge a specific geographic area where you could do local broadcasting, and there's all kinds yeah. of things you can do with that. Right. Now, one of the and proposals I, I have. Get does it disable the mobile telephone when it's in use? No. no. It's just One of the proposals I have is what I'm going to call civil, civic telemetry on channel 855 allocated to civic telemetry. So this would be binary data that they're constantly streaming away about the environment. In other words, what is the pressures and the temperatures and so on now, what they're forecasting to be in three hours, what they're crossing about 12 hours. 
Then you'll know, should the air conditioning system be shutting down now? Should we go up? Should I shut the heating and system off? Should I sprinkle my lawn into the rail tonight? So, with embedded devices, if embedded devices know accurately, not only what is happening right now, but what's going to happen in the next three hours, six hours, and 24 hours from now, they could profile energy usage much better. So we have that. People, who, people would know if it's going to be a cold night or if it's going to be a very rainy night. And so would devices. And we wouldn't need to stream that with text and irritate people with a bell going off because that kind of data will be streaming all the time on channel 855. Your embedded software, embodied devices, will be receiving this, decoding it, and then it will tell you, oh, my user said, hey, uh, when it's going to rain hard, I want to be told, ring, ring, ring the bell. But if he says, no, my user doesn't care about rain, don't ring the bell. This way we want our bells going off all the time. So the great thing about this, this is not in text, this time to hit the channel here is in very compressed binary. And it can be used to trigger devices like lawn sprinklers, not to yeah. sprinkle if it's going to rain tonight. You know, okay. air conditioning units to top and back if the voltage is going to be safe. Civic value. Civic value. Civic value doesn't yeah. have to just that's be that's that's the the green. Yeah. That's the greening of the city. Civic value. That's the green, green, okay. Okay. cool city. That's what we're going to do, but that would only be possible if you've been injected in here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the reason why we've designed the system so that things like that's possible to get in. And so you can, so somebody can subscribe to this or not, and well, they pay for the subscription to the civic telemetry. For example, it's, it's, uh, for example. Uh, the, the problem with, with this is this is where, where you're now getting part of the study. You know about Ambien, that kind of thing, or what you do with like enforce stuff. That, that only exists. We already have ways to do this without having to phone somebody to the media. Because we have lots of ways to say those. Yeah, but this is too much science. No, but so no, no, so no, so no, so no, 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 as long as it has either GSM or CDMA or UMTS or, or uh, LTA, yeah, it, 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 it will be grandfathered in. The whole, because it's, yeah. a, because it's a, yeah. a national yeah. treaty, you won't treat it, it's going to set the channel down by yeah. yeah. fire. It would mean it should work everywhere in the world. So when you go on holiday to Greece, your phone will still now tell you what is going to happen in Greece in the next 12 hours and so on. We're going to go straight oh, to the because it, because But we want to get rid of the phone. We want it to go straight to the sprinklers. No, no, no. The, the point I'm making is what you're saying is, you put in a single over IP and now you can be able to sell it. If you're going to put in all this effort, why do all these channels? Why just say, give me IP? Then you don't have to have any international treaty once you get the message through, because all you do is you subscribe to whatever service you want. No, 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 no. I, I still need to have, and I'm going to be working with the Internet Engineering Task Force on this. There's a political problem here. Because I'm a representative of the ITU, I'm not allowed to interfere with IP directly. Once we have got the framework in there for cellular, then I can go to the Internet Engineering Task Force and say, give me the same range of multicast address space for this. Ah, then I can do it tonight. But, but it's it's not the idea. Exactly. No, but what I'm saying is, give me multicast and failed idea. Well, it should be a successful one if you have an application for it. I asked them. I, I, I have an actually them. interesting observation. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it that multicast has failed and Self-broadcast is it the same reason? Uh, I can tell you why my theory about multicast. Well, that's something to do with Cisco. No, well, it's right with Cisco. My theory is just like the QoS picks and all these other ideas you throw in the fail. It's not that great an idea. You so rarely have to broadcast to everybody. And when you want fan out, there's so many other ways of doing it. Then rather than depending upon the complex protocol being implemented no. everywhere, uh, you can just sign up to re-broadcast something you want to relay it. Well, but no, 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 Network protocol, and it's fine as an application protocol. 
but it has to use multicast underneath, otherwise you'd be okay. broadcasting the same you you yeah. your network. Give another example. example. Yeah. I, I, this, one in the I went to New York, and we've been talking to uh, the New York City people about this. For example, if there's going to be a power failure... You're the ones that did 9 11 what are you talking about? Yeah, well, <laughs> usually <laughs> when the power goes off, it doesn't go off very suddenly. It looks like it to us like it goes off suddenly, but normally the power, the power company people know in a couple of minutes advance what's going to happen. It's very rare. It's those hurricanes. Don't worry, we do the poles fall down. Now, in a case like that, <laughs> well, they actually right. have to turn the power off to save the grid from it's collapse. It's a foot tall tree that just yeah, fell over. So they've got their hands behind them. <laughs> Do we don't have to have the bias? We even have a bit that says, that says the power is expected to go off, and then all the elevators could power up down to the next floor and stop there with the doors open so that people wouldn't get stuck in the elevators, so the firefighters would need to get people out of the elevators. The generators could start up and bring themselves online right away, so that when the power goes off, it goes, it's already there, and so on. They were trying to actually do that uh, signal over, over the uh, power wires. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> 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 switching off advertising slightly right. or telling air conditioning units to go down to right. about three right. quarters of power or some other things. Well, yeah. so and I then mean, I the, sure. the, the frequency else, yeah. might never drop right. down low enough so that you have to do it. But if right. you don't have a, a universal method for doing it, GSM, despite its pin pulse, does have the advantage that it's very, very, it's as close to universal as we've Is got. Is there a compelling edition inside the ADA? And what's an ADA? Uh, Americans with Disability Act. I don't know. One country that has this is Holland. They, the, the Dutch did this to, to reach the uh, yes. Holland has a siren system for warning about flooding, and they realised that they oh, definitely yeah. couldn't hear the sirens. Yeah. So they well, sent their coffins and said, "Find out how we're going to tell the death." And the, they came up with self-broadcast. Well, now they're required by law under the ADA. But, to, no, but no, they're not because the ADA has effectively been eviscerated by, by case law. No. Yes. I just want yes. a case with the ADA. The ADA is effectively eviscerated. I mean, yeah. it, anyway, it's not just it's, uh, I mean, it's not, the Dutch. No, I don't say is that's interesting. The, the reason why yeah. I like the ADA is the, the less that we're going to go over the years to be completely complicated. And what we're probably not necessarily doing is you sign a company to the side of this, but then you really don't get the best innovation. If you separate, transport extension from each application, they can then proceed in parallel rather than having to be all or nothing. Uh, I, no, I agree. I, I think I'm, I've been on this project 10 years now. I'm very sure it's going to take me another 15 years to get it right because when we go to LTE and 3G, we're going to be using IP addressing it will be different. But I think if we just keep on waiting and waiting and waiting, we've been a long time for this now, we won't solve the problems which are political because the problem is not technical at all. The technical problems are insignificant compared to the political ones. Well, they're not drawn on this diagram is the political dimension, and it's this. 
You see, the self broadcast broker has got to decide, really, is the mayor allowed to say that? Right. Or is the police chief allowed to say this? Yeah. Who? And who overrules who? You see, there's all these turf wars that go on, especially in America, where you have very complex, overlapping territorial claims. So the other thing the broker does that's very important is if a mayor sends a message to the system as a proposal, it's got to be able to analyze it on the basis of jurisdiction. And say, just a second, this area over here is not his jurisdiction. No, 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 no. no. Yes, so when a mayor sends a message, you act on it. You no, don't sit in here. Why is it not in his jurisdiction? If I'm the mayor of London, I can't tell people. Then you're saying you're the mayor of London and this is what I have ordered. No, but that's fine if you're in London, but you're in a suburb. So if you're in Manchester, if you're the mayor of right. Manchester, you say, I'm the mayor of Manchester. You're hanging yeah, but suppose you're the mayor of Salford, and Salford's part of Manchester, then you're stuck. Well, no. I mean, so it's that's not that's not a place in the The broker's got to know. Now, now, of course, this is not the time to convene the committee in this room. Thank you, sir. We deserve to die anyway. Therefore, what you've got to have, what if you're in the committee, no one knows who you are. That's how he gets his fee, gets a cut of that. My citizen's Manchester. I don't want the mayor That's our county alert system. Sends an SMS to decide on a jurisdictional basis, one thing. But there's other things as well. Why can't it share? I mean, if you're if you're This system is administered by the Samatair County Office of Emergency Services. Why can't you just have a switch over? Well, you can be less you're uh, one of two years coming from those Oh, we found out who the vendor is here. And, and what's more, they have a map of where the other areas are you can sign up for. You have to make the rules about that, then the equipment's got to faithfully follow whatever it was. Yeah. All right, I got a question here. All right, it has to do with the, the emerging market countries or developing countries. Yes. Syria or wherever. And Tanzania. How, how is the regulatory context different and... Um, can you get stuff done there? Yes, yes. In fact, I'm making a lot more progress, uh, particularly in Southeast Asia and in Africa, than I am either in the UK or the USA. The fact is, most countries follow the FCC until the FCC does a move to the and they just go badly. So right now, for example, I have, I'm uh, going to be going probably quite soon to um, the Maldives Islands. Because it happens, I gave this presentation <laughs> once, and the guy who was, and the oh, guy who was at the utility table was in fact Minister for Communications for the Maldives as well as Minister for Emergencies. So he said, well, in my case it's easy because there's only one person to make the decision. Uh, so they've had, a, they've had a committee that's met and thought about it for a year, and they just wrote back to me last month saying, yeah, we like the idea, come and do it. Okay. So, you know, we could easily do it in a place like the Maldives or, or Sri Lanka's a more difficult problem because they've got a sort of war going on. But, uh, <laughs> there are other places where so we're not having difficulty getting the there's 1,500 carriers around the world? Something like that. So what happens when it's a earthquake? What happens then? Well, well, you tell us ah, okay, now I need to tell you about that as well. Um, because, luckily, this is where my background at the UN comes in. <laughs> when you start doing things across borders, things become far more complicated. However, there are models for us to resolve that. Here's an example of what I mean. I went to a conference once, and the Germans announced that they would have a free satellite system whereby if they would pay for them, would give tsunami alarms to everybody, including Indonesia. And the chairman of the conference said to me, come in this room, come in this room. And I said, what is it? He said, I can tell you this is going to fail because the government of Indonesia will never tolerate for a German citizen to be telling Indonesian citizens so what they should do. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if it's technologically more elegant, it's not going to happen. So I said, right, so I designed it like this. In every sovereign country, or sovereign state like Florida or Texas, what have you, you have one of these. It follows the rules there. If these people have decided oh, yeah. that they will accept an alarm from external alarm system, like a tsunami alarm, mm -hmm. then it comes in here, it's it gets modified according to what they said, but notice it changes its sovereignty. 
now it becomes a Floridian message or a Indonesian message. It's changed its, its sovereignty, therefore it's free to go to the citizens of that place as a sovereign message from that government because they agree. It's a pure English. So therefore, by, by means of this network, we, you have to respect everybody's sovereignty. You have to respect everybody's turf. This is what I've learned. So therefore, whenever you're going to install a system, and even if whether it's a small island or a big country like the States, it doesn't matter. But the, the, the uh, governor of um, Florida, for example, wants to have his own broker because he wants to set the rules. Of course, that's fair. Sure, but if there's an EAS message that's come from a federal system, it will have to be signaled to their system first so we can get, go through it and then appear. Very really sure. The hurricane belt stood a hundred years ago. Yeah. Well, the reason well. they did it, you know why they didn't know about it? Uh, because the head of the weather company said you will not allow to list the message from the weather stations. Yeah, that's a yeah. classic example. We have that a lot. We have, we have this situation where, uh, where NOAA built a weather station on, on one of the Caribbean islands and they, and they refused to send any information back because they said it was their sovereign cloud. They said this, this wind is our wind and that's our cloud. You can't have the information back until our guys have seen it. But it's like NASA predicted what was going to happen with the New Orleans hurricane and after that NOAA told them never to forecast the weather again. <laughs> no, and so you have these, we're, we're here for sort of, sort of a, a comment on this. And this yeah. is where I think we, we, we have a lot of talk about what might be for all the internet versus this. And that's the question, because the internet doesn't respect the same values in a fundamental way. And that's why the politicians will always make sure that No, they're going to try, yeah. but they're going to fail. Yeah. So, like, because in a deeper sense, the kind of thing the rules and jurisdictions are the stuff we deal with every day with the internet security access control. Yeah. And I think problems, and this is where, where it's coming from the IQ, the IQ actually thinks they can solve these fundamental and solvable problems. Okay, and the real thing, what do you do to solve an unsolvable problem is you show it off on the user. So you want to decouple these. Well, 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 you have to find the right... No, I was going to so the question, you need to find the right... Well, two problem. questions. Go back to my original, my last question about the emerging market countries. Yeah. I think your point is great because the thing about those countries is, is they have a whole lot more to lose if there is a major environmental disaster. Because they don't have a lot of cash to put things back together with. They don't have state-of-the-art hospitals, et cetera, et cetera. So when their infrastructure gets being they're, they're like down for years and years, and maybe they don't even catch up again. Sure. So can you address that? And so how they get more motivated for warning systems because of the fact that they are very much um, watching their bottom line constantly? Um, I'm, I'm only allowed to respond to requests from governments for information. I'm not allowed to go to any government and tell them what to think. It's a strict no. And so what I'm allowed to do, though, is to ask them questions. So I can, uh, what I did was I went to Tanzania, and I met with the Ministry of uh, Telecommunication and Ministry of Emergency Management, and I said to them, Your Excellency, uh, I know that you are an expert in these matters. I'd like to have your opinion about this. And they said, My opinion is this is a great idea. I think we should study it some more. What I cannot do is go to the Tanzanians and say, Hey, you should be doing this, because they'd be going, Oh, yeah, <laughs> on your bike. You, have, you can do it, but you have to do it right. You have to do it diplomatically. Because I've, I've, I've been trying to do this thing for so long with so many different methods. The only way to get this done is diplomatically on the government side, make sure that they feel that it's them who's asking for it, that they're fully in charge, that their sovereignty is being respected. From the network side, we've got to let them know they're not going to lose money. In fact, they may even make some, so that they feel comfortable about that. And from the citizen's side, they need to know, here's something that you want to have, because every report I've ever had read says that we need to have this. It's easy to have. You just go to your mobile and switch on channel number 921, and that's all there is to it, and you don't have to pay any money, Nobody knows where you are, so there's no back channel with this. Oh, nobody will know where you are, nobody will know where you've been, and without even, you, without even anybody knowing where you are, the government can still tell you if it's going to you know, rain hard or not, something like that. So a different approach for every different group. Do you have, this, do you have the capability of having this up and running? Yeah. Almost mm -hmm. in the flip of the switch. Yes. And any sort of, and it looks like it's already brings down the lot into what is possible. Yeah. Maybe not motivating, but it's possible. Sure. Uh, why not, of those 1,500 carriers, you know, the 80 20, 20% of the same percent of the business work, but if you get into the little, little guys yes. and get 10 out of 20 working right now, yes. 
It's a better presentation to say these guys are already doing that. Yeah. And it's 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 because you get to shoot down any of the engineering discussion about obstacles and any of the marketing discussion and the security discussion or anything else. What, what we did was we went to the RCA, the Rural Carers Association, and we told them, look, you guys, this is something that you can be offering your customers for almost nothing, and they're going to love you for it. You're going to be able to build relationships with your local community. Isn't it great? And they said, we're not doing anything until the FCC report's been published, because we know the FCC are studying this. But according to the FCC's, uh, well, well, since that report, they're not going to do anything until something like 2014. No, I'm, I'm, so, I'm not going to wait that long. I've got another question. Have you done an analysis of your competition? Well, let me tell you, these guys who, um, San Mateo County, where I live, which is the county north of Palo Alto here, has a new alert system where you can ask for your email, and the company that sold them things has 170 um, emergency networks already installed. Now, it may not be the same technology, it may not be broadcast, but the fact is they've sold it to counties and towns, and they've got 170 networks installed already. And um, what it says on my county is if you want it for any of the other counties in the Bay Area, um, certain ones that have it, you can just sign up and give them your email. Now that's different because I have to give them the email, I have yeah, to give them the phone easy. number. Right. So, so, but, but the, the point is that they sold to the counties and they sold 170 networks. But you may think of it with. Okay, here's a Washington contact for Google. Okay. You're going to sell them in Megabits. Yeah, yeah. And the principles of virtual signaling and everything, he might be a good person, be an ally. Uh, sure. He actually yes, he did. He, uh, one of our, uh, the guy who actually wrote the software for this already writes software for that kind of thing. Okay. That's what he does already. So what we've done is we've decided that we'll go to local sheriffs. We have a sheriff in, um, in, in uh, Montgomery County in Texas who's bought off, off us a normal texting system. So we actually already set up normal texting and other systems. <laughs> Just to show that we haven't got anything against that, it's just that it sucks. Because as soon as you try to send like a hundred thousand or something, it doesn't do it. Right. But we do sell the system to do that. So our new strategy is go along and try and sell those old systems, but be honest and say, okay, there's a limit to how good this thing is, honestly. And it depends upon two things. How many people have got to go to the website and subscribe? They've got to trust you with their phone number or their email address. And of course, the other thing is, if you go to a website and say, I want alerts from Montgomery County, and then you go to a city, the city of Chicago, you're not going to get information about problems in Chicago. You're going to get information about where you signed up. That's this right. gives you information about where you're asleep right now, even if that is in some island in Sri Lanka. So you've got a, you've got a clear you competitive advantage over these guys. Yeah, okay. So, but I still think you have to market to the counties. Well, the they manage the counties can't oh. sell so, That's easy. You're up against this is where but we have to do it multiple times for each cell company in the process. The problem you have is this transcends reality. No, you don't because, you see, the, the broker here, one of its other jobs is to make sure that every cell company that's in the area that has agreed to participate gets a copy bit more than that. In the future, you know, when, there'll be Wi-Fi and there'll be WiMAX and then there'll be LTE. Yes, so yes. you will also send a copy to them as well if they are participating. I don't owe the cellular industry any favours. And if the county say to me, broadcast this to as many devices as you possibly can, then we will do all the right signal protocol information, we'll send it off to the cellular company, but also to all the Wi-Fi hotspots and also to all the participating other the carriers that we can think of who have chosen to participate. But we have to start somewhere. What I've learned is, if we don't get started on this, and we don't get a framework in place, by the time the technology rolls along, there'll be so much rah, 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 and so many meetings trying to do it, it'll be chaos, and everybody will get a lot of spam. And if people get spam over this thing, they will switch it off. Right. If they switch it off, we'll have lost it forever. Right. We have to make sure, above all, that when this thing works the first time, it works just like we said. You will, you, if you agree to receive emergency messages, that's all you get, and you don't get commercial messages, but if you want to get commercial messages as well, Specifically asked to, then we will. That's possible if we have a framework. I think what we should be, be doing is we should be going to Netflix or eBay and saying that uh, we should have a Netflix channel or an eBay channel or a Macy's channel and give them the opportunity to subsidize a uh, mobile device. Is it for the channel? What do you think about that? Well, you can well, just RSS feed, just put a blog on it, go get Scoble. <laughs> Oh yeah, do an RSS feed or, or whatever.
No, I don't think you want to do that. I think you want to just focus on emergency. Otherwise, it's not differential. You know, if, if, if it starts getting all the other commercial well, stuff, um, then I think that's it's, hard. That's hard. Couple, because well, there's a couple of different ways to go with it. One way is to keep it pure. Another way is... How about the weather channel? All right, that's the issue. Yeah, I subscribe to that. local weather over uh, traffic. We understand that. The arrangement in traffic. Wisconsin is that, uh, of course, will be. When they transmit the uh, messages in Wisconsin, it will also give you the frequency of a local FM radio train station to tune into, because unfortunately, text is a bit limiting, and you're not going to be able to tell the entire Shamu on that. So what it will say is, uh, make How a big are the messages? in this area, tune to, and then somewhere on the channel. What's the message size again? The maximum message size is about 1,400 characters, but we all think that's ridiculous. We think you should never send a message more than 160 characters. Is about right, we think. Yeah. You'll probably crash phones if you send a message that's bigger than that. Yeah, well, yeah they, won't, they won't get the message. All of the phones vary. Some phones support it really well as is. Some of them support it really badly as is, and you wouldn't even want to go there. And the majority of them support them just well enough, really. But what I'd like to see is, if there is commercial interest in this, and not only commercial, but civic interest in this for other purposes, then people will bother to write the code to make this work. Most of the reasons why phones doesn't work in phones, when you ask them, how come you didn't fix this bug, they'll go, well, nobody asked us, nobody's ever asked us to fix this, that's why we didn't do it. But if we have people going up to terminal vendors, this is what the Dutch government are going to do. The Dutch Minister of Telecommunications has brought Nokia in the room and said, I think it sucks that this and that model phone don't do self broadcast because I'm going to be using that for my EIS from now on. Go fix it, and they have. And so then already they they put add it to a list of features on the phone. Yeah, yes. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot could be done. And the reason why it hasn't been done is because the networks have been going around uh, denying that they have it. The networks went to Congress and said, "Oh, we don't have any such facility." But for several years, in hundreds of millions of dollars, then we'll develop it. Do you think in the United States it might be useful if we pass legislation that says that cell networks should have these characteristics and um, this particular architectural component should be reserved for doing CBE? Okay, this is what they did instead. The WARN Act was not written like that. The WARN Act says a network can, must, must uh, transmit the AS messages or it must tell all of its customers that it's not going to. Yeah. But it doesn't tell them how to do it. Yeah. So that's why they had this big committee that started up to investigate how they were going to do it. Which in its 200 pages didn't mention that they already had a solution in it. Because what they said was, we want to form another committee to then develop the technology. What they should have done, if they were honest, is say, well, despite its many problems, of which there are some, self broadcast is a good enough one in the interim. It could be better, but that's what we have. And they did not say that. So my argument with the networks is, it's all very well to foot drag, and you may have good reasons for doing it, but for Pete's sake, don't, don't go up there and say we haven't got something we have, because that's lying, you know. We cut them with their pants down here. Well, um, this is the problem. And but, as I said, if we if had enough applications doing this, then that problem would go away. Yeah, I'm probably going to get kicked out of the studio. Let's say thank you to Mark. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.